we have four independent variables that affect the shape of the cylinder once we transform it from the zeta plane to the z plane. And uh, those independent variables are r, the radius of that cylinder, uh, epsilon, the, um, the location of the singularities, uh, zeta naught, uh, which is the, the offset of that cylinder from the origin, uh, and actually it has two components, xi naught and eta naught. Xi naught is the offset in the x direction, or the real axis, and eta naught is the offset of that cylinder in, uh, in the y axis or uh, the imaginary axis. So let's look at the effects of each of these. Uh, so first, let's just look at epsilon. And, uh, and I've written epsilon here as a, as a fraction of the radius. So the, the radius is the radius of the circle. I've just set it to 1 uh, for these examples here. And so um, remember epsilon, uh, the actual, uh, the actual uh, singularity here in the zeta plane is uh, r minus epsilon. So epsilon is really a distance uh, uh, if there's no offset of the cylinder um, from the origin. It's really the distance between the, the radius of that cylinder and uh, the, the singularity there. So let's start off with something really small, uh, uh, 0.02. So our epsilon is just 0.02 times the radius of that cylinder away from uh, uh, from the wall of that cylinder. And uh, what you see is that we get basically a flat plate here. Uh, and then the the uh, because that singularity is so close to that uh, wall, of course, the singularity in the z-plane is really close uh, to the surface of that geometry of that really flat ellipse. Uh, so let's set it off a little bit more, so 10% away. So now we can start to see some difference there. You can see that little red uh, dot uh, moving inboard from the cylinder. And uh, you can see that this has starting to thicken up a little bit um, uh, as those singularities move away from that wall. Let's move it in a little bit more. So it's only half the distance. So this is 0.5 the radius. So that's where that epsilon sits there. Um, or, or where those singularities sit there, half the distance between the origin and the, the edge of that circular cylinder. You can see we're getting a little bit wider. And then let's say that it's equal to the radius, okay? So uh, so basically what happens is that then the, the uh, singularities both coalesce at the origin and what we get back is a perfect cylinder. Um, okay, so this is the effect of epsilon. And, um, and let's come back to that in just a minute. Uh, let's look at the effect of radius. So, um, so what I've taken is is this case right here, uh, where we have this offset by 0.5 r, and uh, and all I've done is is multiplied the radius by two, but I've kept that ratio the same. So epsilon is still half the distance to that uh, to the outer radius, and what you can see is we get the exact same shape. So here. Uh, we got this ellipse here, and, and it looks the exact same as this ellipse. It's just that it's been scaled. Um, and you can see that the radius of this red circle is twice the radius of the radius of this uh, red circle here. So, so uh, scaling uh, or, or changing R simply scales the entire problem. It just makes a larger airfoil in the, uh, or a larger uh, Joukowsky cylinder in the Z-plane. Um, Okay, and uh, okay, so let's come back to epsilon. Now, for epsilon, um, uh, epsilon controls the location of that of those singularities, and we've looked at what happens as we move those singularities uh, from from the surface of that cylinder all the way to the center line here that returns a perfect cylinder. Of course, if it gets really close to that edge, then we then we get uh, this thing that looks like a flat plate. Well, for a Joukowsky airfoil, that singularity actually has to lie exactly on that cylinder. What we do is, is we move it to that location so that we get a sharp trailing edge. So, um, so this is uh, really close to a Joukowsky airfoil. Not quite. We need this actually epsilon uh, has to be such that it actually sits on this and, and we have it offset just a little bit. So what I've done uh, to look at the effects of the offset of the cylinder now is I've actually constrained these the following examples here so that they so that that singularity always lies right on the surface of the cylinder to create an airfoil so it creates this cusp at the trailing edge okay 
So now let's look at the offset of, of that cylinder. Now this red circle here represents the center of that cylinder and we've got gray lines uh, representing the, the axes here. Uh, and so you can see that this red cylinder is offset just slightly to the left uh, on the x-axis. Remember, C is our offset on the x-axis, and we're going to look at eta here in just a moment. But we've offset C by uh, minus 0.05, so we've moved it to the left. And, uh, and what that does is it creates some kind of thickness. Remember, if we don't offset it, now this example up here is with it uh, not offset, we basically get a flat plate back. And if we actually set this to zero, we would get a perfectly thin flat plate back because we'd have a singularity at both ends uh, and we'd have an airfoil of zero thickness throughout, okay? But uh, by setting this off to the left-hand side, um, this cylinder to the left-hand side just a little bit, what we've done is uh, is moved this this cylinder away, or the, 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 the surface of the cylinder away from that singularity slightly. Uh, while keeping this this singularity right on the, the cylinder surface. And so it creates a cusp here, but it gives us some thickness here uh, at what we're going to call the, the leading edge, okay? Now let's offset that a little bit more. So let's move it further to the left, and uh, you can see that we get a little bit more thickness. If you compare the thickness of these two airfoils, uh, you can see that we've increased the thickness by offsetting it more. And again, we're setting this singularity so it always falls on the surface of that cylinder. So what we learned here is that the offset in the X direction, or C naught, is related to the thickness of the airfoil. Okay, so uh, the further, uh, or the larger that is, the thicker the airfoil, and uh, the smaller this value is, or the smaller this offset, the thinner the airfoil. In fact, if we have zero off it, offset, then we have an infinitely thin airfoil, okay? Okay, so let's look at eta now, a vertical offset. Um, so here we've got, uh, uh, now I've kept the thickness of the, of the, uh, uh, of the airfoil here, but, uh, but now we're gonna offset it in eta, okay? So, so you can see we're off to the left just a little bit. We have a little bit of thickness. Now we're gonna move it up in the y direction. You can see that that red circle sits up off of the x-axis, so that has some positive eta value of 0.05. And uh, what we see now is that we start to get some camber in that airfoil. If we offset it a little bit more, we even get more camber, okay? So eta, or the vertical offset of this cylinder, is related to the camber. So a symmetric airfoil actually has zero offset in the y direction, or in the eta direction here. Uh, a symmetric airfoil has, has zero, uh, an eta value of zero. Uh, and a thin airfoil has an x value, or xe, C naught value of zero, okay? So that's how these four uh, parameters, uh, the radius, the epsilon, and zeta naught, or the two components of zeta naught, affect the geometry that we're gonna get, or the, the, uh, the, this uh, Joukowsky cylinder geometry. And for some of these examples, we've constrained epsilon so that epsilon is set so it actually gives us an airfoil, a Joukowsky airfoil.